Hello everyone, welcome to the series questions and answers based on the computational finance course. Today we have question number 10 based on lecture number 4. The question is, what are the deficiencies of the Black-Scholes model? Why is the Black-Scholes model still used? The Black-Scholes model, as discussed in this course, is a fundamental model for pricing of derivatives. Um, it starts, the option pricing starts with the Black-Scholes uh, model, uh, where the assumptions of the model are very simplistic, in the sense that we have a single um, SDE, so geometric brown motion, for representing uh, of a stock, and that process is used to price of options. Uh, over years, of course, we have learned that the assumptions of the model are not uh, adequate, especially these days, uh, to the current market. Uh, in particular, we know that a single um, uh, parameter sigma is insufficient to calibrate, to implant volatility smiles and skews. So that's a big uh, downside. Um, we also know that um, the let's say, simple assumptions or the uh, let's say, trivial assumptions about constant interest rates are also uh, not realistic. Of course, in the terms of a pricing of uh, options, uh, interest rates are not so crucial. The options Options are driven by volatility, so the volatility effect is the is the key element. Uh, also, the uh, another disadvantage of the Black-Scholes model is that we know that the uh, the returns driven by geometric brown emotion are not heavily tailed. Uh, enough heavily tailed. So this means that mm, the extreme events uh, have extremely low probability, which is also unrealistic. Uh, and this is also related to the part where we talk about uh, implied volatility smile or skew, that the Black-Scholes model is not able to calibrate to that. So the question is, why is it still used? And the answer is uh, um, rather uh, involved, because Black-Scholes model is not per se used for pricing of uh, exotic derivatives, uh, it can be still used, however, for pricing of European options, and I will explain that in a second. Uh, for exotics, uh, it is not used unless there are no more uh, market instruments. So, for example, if somebody asks us to price some exotic in some asset class in which we have no information about other instruments, then indeed you could consider using Black-Scholes model for pricing. However, that's a quite dangerous uh, task because you will not be able to hatch to hatch your exotic derivatives using uh, simpler instruments like plain vanilla European type of options. So that's not suitable for that. Um, however, uh, Black-Scholes model is still used, and especially if we talk about uh, implied volatilities, uh, and this is what every option trader is aware of, implied volatilities are available in the market, and those are always Black-Scholes model. So if we talk about uh, uh, implied volatilities, it is always implied volatilities based on Black-Scholes model. So even if you have uh, uh, some exotic model, let's say Heston bites with uh, fancy jumps or whatever, uh, then if we talk about implied volatilities for that model, those implied volatilities will be always implied using Black-Scholes formula. So this means that we would take some model, we calculate option prices, and then those option prices would be used in a, to invert Black-Scholes formula to find sigma imp. The reason for that is that uh, in the industry and also in academia, implied volatility is a term of uh, communicating what is the volatility, what is the risk of a particular option. So uh, it's very telling uh, because this volatility is independent of the level of the asset. So if we have two assets, one is a value at one, one is at a thousand, uh, those two can have completely different implied volatility. The levels are a movement, let's say, of uh, 10 points, uh, has significantly different impact on the overall risk. So in this way, we, uh, it's much more suitable to talk about implied volatilities. So that's the, basically the main, uh, the, the ba main uh, way, the main uh, approach to deal with uh, Black-Scholes model, how the Black-Scholes model is used in modern finance. Um, and I think that's the that's fully explains the, the the current applicability of the Black-Scholes model and also explains your deficiencies of the framework. In this course, we have covered multiple uh, alternatives, uh, in particular stochastic volatility models. Also, I mentioned local volatility models and how those models can be used for pricing of derivatives. So please uh, revisit lectures if you are not fully familiar with that. Thank you very much and see you next time.